Surgeons of Reddit, what was your oh crap moment? I was doing a corneal transplant when I had the oh crap moment. During surgery, I cut off the patient's own cornea and replace it with a new donor cornea. During that moment when the host cornea was off but before I could get the new one on, there's literally nothing on the front of the eye except a tear film and aqueous humor. Anyway, the patient takes that moment to start vomiting. The reason we tell everyone to skip food and drink is so they don't aspirate in case they throw up. This patient lied about eating breakfast and started throwing up everything. The eyes still open sky at this time. Everything inside of the eye can now become outside of the eye. And she's bucking and vomiting. Those not in the know will say this is not good. Those really in the know will say oh crap. Anyway, I had to grab the new cornea and start stitching as fast as I could on a patient actively throwing up. I used 10 0 nylon sutures which are thinner than an eyelash. It turned out okay but not great. Don't lie about eating breakfast before surgery, folks. Doing a c-section for this poor mum who'd been in labor for hours. Baby wouldn't come out of the hole we'd made, so more pressure was applied to the fundus, top of the uterus, and suddenly whoosh, baby zooms out like a torpedo, covered in lubricating vernix, zips over the surgical sheeting which is the texture of a slip and slide and almost rockets straight off the table. The baby's foot was caught by the reg who whipped her up in the air upside down like an old cartoons but almost dropped her again due to gloves and vernix. Thankfully the midwife was ready with a towel and caught the baby to wrap her up. Mum and dad seemed to think this was normal practice and didn't notice but me and my colleague just stared at each other with a look of absolute horror. It still makes me shudder to think how close the baby was to hitting the floor head first. Never happened before or since. Doctors were very accommodating and even had a baby juggling routine to put new mothers at ease 5 stars. Would give birth again. When I was a new RN working the IQ in a large teaching hospital, I came into work one morning to a patient that was admitted that night, intubated, breathing tube in, sedated, Foley catheter, tube in PP hole, and all. Long story short, he was extubated, breathing tube out, that same shift and was completely alert and oriented. He was an end stage renal patient meaning his kidneys didn't work and he needed dialysis, and was only in his late 30s. Said he never made urine anymore and didn't need the Foley catheter so he wanted it out because it was hurting. Now the catheter bag had been empty my whole shift which is normal seeing as how he didn't make urine anymore. And this hospital had a nurse driven Foley removal policy. Meaning while we needed a doctor's order to insert one. We could remove one at our discretion. Unless a doctor specifically put in orders not to. This patient had no such doctor order. So I went to remove the catheter. They are held in the bladder by a balloon on the end that is inflated with 10 milliliters of saline. I'd inflated the balloon removing 10 milliliters of saline. And pulled it out. As soon as the catheter left his penis. Blood started pouring out in a heavy stream. Turns out the nurse who placed it on admission hadn't advanced it far enough since there was no urine production to indicate correct placement and had inflated the balloon while still in his urethra causing trauma. It would not stop bleeding. I had to hold this man's penis shut to put pressure on it while my co-worker Paige the resident who came and looked at me with pity as he told me to just keep holding this 30 something year old man's penis in my hands to staunch the blood flow until urology could get there to assess. It just kept gushing blood every time I used up to check. For over an hour total I held this man's penis and tried to make polite conversation until the urologist arrived. Not a surgeon, but was working in obstetric theater in UK mid heatwave last year. This is important as maternity wards are kept quite warm as newborn babies aren't good at regulating their temperatures. Combine this with a heatwave and the fact that in Britain we're not exactly used to high temperatures and we have the perfect storm. Mid-emergency cassari and the scrub nurse assisting the op starts feeling faint. This is unusual as this scrub nurse worked in these theaters full time so this was her bread and butter. So I can only conclude it was the heat. She has to step out so the show takes her place assisting the OBS registrar with the section. This show looked extremely junior, as in first section ever. And they were trying to assist with the instruments in the uterus when they fainted. I had to jump in and grab the back of their theater gown to stop them fasciplanting the open uterus. And then sort of gently tug backwards to let them fall into me when someone else has taken over assisting. This show was not exactly small. Thank god the baby was already out. When I was younger, 
I had a rather complex external fixator, cage, applied to my leg, it had 3 rings, 2 large 360 degree rings around my leg, one in the upper middle of the shin, one in the lower zero, which had humongous rods to keep the cage fixed to my leg, and a third one, which was a horseshoe type ring around my ankle, which threaded all sorts of pins through my ankle. Each pin set in a certain wah. The point of this external fixator was to relocate and fix the positioning of my ankle, so it wouldn't be so fricked. Basically, I have had a birth defect called talipes, club foot, equines. A lot of bone got removed before the fixator was put on, so this way it could all grow. It was a 9 hour surgery, and my doctor, who I won't name, was pretty chuffed with himself after seeing it all installed on my leg. This was until he looked closer. The pins I spoke about before, with the numbers on them almost like those sizing things on cheap cothangers, were all colored and numbered, set for my dad to do every morning and night. He was looking at the pins, and the numbers. He looked glance away and looked back with a stress face on. After a few seconds, and a slight hand on head gesture, he whispered crap. In his mind, he had organized the pins in an incorrect way. He was stressed beyond his mind for a few minutes. He was worried he fricked everything up. Luckily he hadn't. He just needed to move one or two numbers. One year later, 8 months after the frame was taken off, which was in 4-6 months, I ended up having my leg amputated. The surgery didn't work how we wanted it to, or at least how I wanted it to, which we were sort of expecting. The goal was to get me walking, the amputation got me running. Bear in mind, the amputation was my call, I was 12 when it was done. Best decision I ever made. I had a college prof with leg issues, he finally got them both amputated in his 50s I believe. He's so happy now, I'm glad you got it done, I'm glad you can run. 5th year resident here, there are lots of bad oh crap moments throughout training. Such necrotizing soft tissue infections or take backs for bad complications or deaths during cases. However I'd like to share a recent positive oh crap moment. 15 cm kidney tumor with thrombus into the vena cava. Big incision. Great exposure of the vasculature and the tumor. My attending and I are dancing around the aorta and vena cava. We are able to feel the tumor thrombus in the IVC. I was expecting that we'd need to cut and clamp the vena cava to get all the cancer out. But my attending literally squeezes the tumor out of the vena cava back into the renal vein. And then has me tie the renal vein off so the tumor doesn't slip back into the vena cava. Patient went home in like 4 days. Margins were negative. And is still doing great. First time I felt like oh crap. I'm a surgeon. Surgeon here. I've dealt with loads of morbid stuff but one thing that made me stop and go oh crap was a conversation with a young patient who had a perforated colon from diverticular disease, which is a common wear and tear of the colon. He was one of youngest patients I had seen with this condition and certainly the youngest with a perforation so bad as to require an operation. When I was counseling him on the operation, which involves removing the perforated part of the colon and giving him a colostomy. He told me his biggest concern was how he was going to have anal sex with his same sex partner. He would only have a small stump of rectum left inside, which would be at risk of perforation with any force applied to it. It made me really think about the implications of the surgery we do. The operation is the easy part. I was the patient. I had a liver transplant and was having an ERC done to place a new bile duct stent. Well apparently my anatomy is different than normal, and my lungs go more down my sides, so he accidentally caused a nick, which caused a hemothorax. So when I woke up I couldn't breathe, they did an x-ray and had to do a chest tube. Eventually I was so exhausted I asked to be vented so he vented me. Apparently he cried he felt so bad about it all, but it wasn't him being malicious or negligent, it was simply an accident. Sometimes things happen, you can be the best in the world and still make a mistake. Not a surgeon, thought I'd share this though. Husband went in for a routine colonoscopy and as they were prepping him, an aesthetist asks him if he's a ginger. My husband tells him yeah. When he was a kid growing up, he had fire engine red hair, though it's faded to a more strawberry blonde now. The anesthetist laughs and says, okay, I gotcha, we'll give you the red hair dosage and winks. Well my husband thinks it's a funny, until he wakes up at the tail end of the procedure, pun intended, and doctors are just chatting it up and what have you. 
Turns out it's not a joke and redheads have some type of natural block to anesthesia. Dude had given him max allowable dosage and he still woke up. Happened a couple years later. They gave him ketamine and some other crap to knock him out to get wisdom teeth out when he told dentist about the colonoscopy thing. He still woke up at the end of that one too. The red hair is a mutation. The location of the mutation also impacts the opioid receptor gene. <laughs> Happened at my hospital a mentally ill young woman, who was pregnant at the time was in denial, locked herself into her room when she realized the contractions were coming. She basically didn't push and the baby didn't come naturally. Her family called 911 because of the smell. They realized her baby had died inside her and was basically rotting due to the smell. She was taken to the ward to remove the baby and apparently all the nurses and surgeons were vomiting because once they opened her up the smell was overpowering and it was traumatizing to see a rotting baby. Heard an oh crap moment as a patient on the operating table. A couple of years ago I was in labor for 28 hours, pushing for 6, when my child started showing signs of distress. He had slightly elevated heart rate and I had the makings of a fever. My midwife at the hospital told me the doctor was coming in to check to see if a vacuum assist could help. She checks me and immediately stands up with blood on her hand and says we're going to the or now. At that time, I started feeling that zoomed out tunnel vision I know for me is shock. I had anxiety, but figured she knew what was best. She did. We got in the or 8 minutes later and when they opened me up, I heard the surgeon say, oh crap. Look at this, they say blood in my catheter bag and upon fully opening me up found my son was actually trying to come through my uterus. He had ruptured it. They got my son out. Those moments where he was stunned and not crying were an eternity. He cried and he was born a completely healthy baby. After I woke up and was back in my room the doctor came in and told me what happened. I knew a ruptured uterus sounded bad, but oh dang I googled and started having a massive anxiety attack. A ruptured uterus is extremely rare and so very dangerous and often fatal. I read from the time it happens you have about 15 minutes before you bleed out and baby is dead. When I went back for my post section follow up my midwife let me know as a practice that's been around 35 years with over 30 midwives and doctors they had never once encountered that and it was such a big deal for them a few days after my birth. They all got together to discuss my case. I was so incredibly fortunate I chose to labor in hospital that the doctor just knew from my vitals and babies that something was off. They just didn't know until they got me open. I can't even tell you how grateful I am for doctor. S. You saved my life and my son's life and our family with forever be grateful. Not me but my uncle. He is a respirologist and was supervising sitting in on lung surgery to remove a tumor. Turns out the tumor was a root ball. Some type of seed had gotten into the patient's lungs and started to grow. Dang watermelons. When I was in pharmacy school I was doing my internal medicine rotation in my final year. My preceptor and I were doing med reviews in the IQ when one of the pulmonary docs was basically like hey you wanna see something cool they were trying to extract a foreign object from a guy's lung in one of the rooms. So we go in and watch for a bit. About 6 people in the room. Tube down the guy's throat. Little grippers at the end. Two doctors watching a monitor and trying to control the grabbers and get it like a claw game. I watched for a bit then after a while I lost interest and went back out to what I was doing. A few minutes later I hear. Got it. Cheers from the room. Oh it's a tooth. Dude aspirated his own molar. Doctor walks out with his trophy in a jar and it's a completely intact tooth root and all. As the patient. I hope if the oral surgeon is on reddit they posted this story. Wisdom teeth removal. All four impacted. Gotta break out the heavy hardware. I'm knocked out. Don't even know the dentist entered the room. I wake up, but not able to move. Just eyes open awake but my limbs won't react to my brain. I can feel the dentist hammering a chisel into my tooth to break it for extraction. My jaw is just coming undone on every hit. My eyes are wide open. Jaw even wider with some evil metal contraption. I'm staring at the assistant begging for her to see me. And after about a dozen hammers to my jaw she glances over and drops the suction. Jumps up and shrieks. The dentist stops to look at her. Then looks at me and I see him say oh crap. Next thing I know I'm waking up post surgery. Crap that nightmares are made of. I woke up during my wisdom teeth removal during the lower right one I woke up and could feel the drill. Dentist noticed and knocked me out again. Just an RN here. 
I was working in the year and had a patient brought in by her husband. Apparently the woman had a fall a week prior and injured her face but refused medical care. Her husband finally forced her to come in. As soon as I see the wound on her face, from across the room, I think, that does not look like any wound I've seen. I approached her and realized maggots had infested the wound and were eating the rotting skin. A really simple and quick fix but I can't imagine her living conditions. I like choose to imagine the wound was cleaned out of wild maggots and then sterile medical grade maggots were used to clean up the dead flesh. D like isn't really the right word there. 8 years after finishing medical school and deferring student loans through residency and fellowship and realizing that I was closer to 40 than 30 with over $200,000 of debt. Capital F. I had an ingrown toenail. It was supposed to be a quick fix. I was 14 and had my mom with me. They let an apprentice do the surgery and he goes oh crap. The doctor in charge just laughed and said no risk. No fun. Turns out they fricked up my toe and I had to have 4 more surgeries to correct it. I cried. The doctor really said don't sweat it. They're not gonna sue Mayo. Hope you're okay now, though. I'm not a surgeon but when I was in med school there was an oh crap moment for everyone including the surgeons, anesthetists, nurses and students. They were prepping a patient for surgery and put him under and the nurse said okay, he's out before they were about to start slicing him open. The patient just had enough strength to move his head from side to side and said no, I'm not out yet. Everyone laughed it off but if the patient didn't do that it could have ended badly. This is one of my worst fears. Not being out, just immobilized and undergoing surgery due to a bad anesthesiologist. Not even sure if that could really happen, but I don't like thinking about it. I'm a scrub nurse, doing a lap nephrectomy. Urologist mistook the abdominal aort for the renal artery, placed the staple gun on the aorta, did not wait the recommended 30 seconds before slicing, cut the abdominal aorta clean in half, patient immediately crashes. Activate massive transfusion protocol. Patient was, somehow, alive when they went up to Iku. Definitely an oh crap moment. I work in cardiovascular and I can think of a couple. On my 8 years career I've had 3 patients start moving their arms in the middle open heart surgery. One of them even tried to sit up. The surgeon was literally pushing the patient's shoulders down and yelling to anesthesia to give the patient something. Another time a simple pericardial window. For different reasons sometimes patients can have extra fluid build up in the pericardial sac that surrounds the heart. The surgeon made a small hole and stuck the sucker in to suction the fluid out and make room for the heart. He stuck the sucker in too far and stuck it through the ventricle. Blood shot out of the small hole just below the sternum. He had to quick open up the patient more under the ribs so he could stick his hand in to plug the hole with his finger. We had to call another surgeon in to help quick crash onto the heart lung machine. My grandfather told a story about a clam coming off an artery while he was pulling a kidney in rural Wyoming in the early 50s. The abdominal cavity was quickly filling with blood and the nurse fainted. He was able to push down with his elbow on the descending aorta and got the clam back on. Patient lived, but I think he chose his surgical assistants little more carefully after that. When I was a surgery intern, I was pulled from doing scut work to help out in a shit shower of a case. One of our professor emeritus in surgery was doing a simple liver biopsy on a patient, and nicked her hepatic artery. The biopsy was for a recurrent tumor, and the patient has been on chemo radiation. What all that basically means is that patient has a hole in a major artery, and her tissue has the consistency of toilet paper. Every time they tried suturing the hole, the tissue just breaks apart, leaving a bigger, more leaky hole. Pretty much all hands were on board. The chief residents were scrubbed in, the seniors were literally squeezing blood bags into the patient's veins, and us interns were runners, going back and forth from more to blood bank to transport blood and plasma. We ended up transfusing over 40 units 12 liters of blood, so the patient lost over 2 times her total blood volume during that surgery. A vascular surgeon eventually swooped in and did a rather slick patchwork that fixed the problem. Even better, the patient was like a daughter to the surgeon. He literally saved this patient's life several times already, and they got really close over the years. She even named one of their kid after him. 
The poor guy broke down a few times during the surgery and was convinced that he had just killed his daughter. The chief residence had to take over a few times when he was mentally not there. That was his last surgery. He retired the next day. Heck of a way to end a surgical career. Honorable. During my third year of medical school I was stitching up the wound after breast cancer surgery and the anesthesiology nurse woke the patient too early as I was making my last stick and I felt the patient moving her arm and trying to sit up. Patient was still covered in surgery draping and cables and still intubated. Luckily most people do not remember much from the first moments after waking up but I got quite nervous from the patient starting to move. And admittedly so, I would imagine that would have been terrifying. Not a surgeon but when I was in nursing school I was observing a tonsillectomy when the power went out. Everything switched over to the backup generators except for the suction which is incredibly important for any surgery but particularly in the throat. Aspiration risk. They ended up having to connect a giant syringe to a length of suction tubing to suction manually while someone went to the other side of the building to find portable suction. Luckily ours was the only theater that had started operating that morning. I am terrified of complications due to tonsillectomies. I had to ligate a carotid artery of a 14 year old because he wouldn't stop bleeding from a botched tonsillectomy. I hate face and neck vessels. The bee bleed like there is no tomorrow. Sorry in advance for this being so long. Not a surgeon. But my mom had to have a kidney removed due to her waiting for almost 2 years to go to the doctor about her pain in her back. The doctors found out it was a large kidney stone and that her kidney was infected and had lots of gross pus shutting it down. After draining the fluids through tubes, over the course of a month and a half, she was finally ready for surgery. Q last Wednesday, the day of the surgery, she was ready to finally be done with it. They removed the stent put in and the tubes no problem. Next was the kidney. Here comes the oh crap moment. As they get ready to remove the kidney, there was complications. The kidney's infection had spread to a portion of her lung and a major artery, making them fragile as toilet paper. As the surgeon removed the kidney, a hole was tore in the lung. And even worse, the artery was severed. At that point it was a race to save her life and stabilize her. I don't remember much about how they fixed her up there, but they had to fly her to a different hospital and have a heart surgeon fix the severed artery in a more permanent fashion. Anyways. The heart doctor saw the grave situation and said she's got a 1% chance for her to make it. But he did such an excellent job, that my mom is still alive, and getting stronger each day. The moral of this story is, if you have insurance and are experiencing pain, go to a doctor as soon as you realize it. You may save your life, and also save some doctors from an oh crap moment like this. It's sad you say if you have insurance and are experiencing pain go to the doctor. It's so true. I have no insurance and pain, so I stay home. Not a surgeon but I was having surgery on my breast to remove what they suspected was cancer. It was benign. But either way I woke up during the surgery and I looked up and saw 4 people with scrub caps on, staring down at me. I looked at my boob in pure horror and that is all I remember because they knocked me back out. Still makes me want to vomit thinking about it. I was only 13. That sounds truly awful. I sincerely hope you never experience anything as bad as that again. I was a 4th year resident and I was on call that day. Around 5pm I went to do rounds and as I got to the first room I came in to find the first year resident on top of the very recently neck operated patient. That morning he had a tumor removed from his parapharyngeal space. The resident was kneeling next to the guy's head with his hands and clothes completely covered in blood. There was blood on the roof on the sheets. On the bed. Dripping onto the floor. You name it. I was instantly petrified. I went to OMFG I have never ever repaired someone's carotid artery I am completely unqualified to help this guy. Someone please help you s. I was the senior resident so I was the only one on call at the time and besides none could get there in time to help this guy. He was bleeding out so it was up to me alone to help him. So I took the guy to the aura as fast as we could and I opened him up. All of the time praying and telling myself it's okay I can do this. I can do this. I was crapping my pants while everyone was looking at me to fix him. I open him up and I see the freaking facial artery loose. Spraying blood all over so I clamped it. Put a knot around it and that was it. We closed him up. Bandage and transfuse the poor guy and I went to collapse on a stool. Well done, doc. 
I was the patient. It was a kidney biopsy. I was drugged up and out of it, but still awake. Laying on my stomach as my kidney doctor worked behind me. He warned me, you're going to hear a click and it will feel like Mike Tyson punched you in the back. Oh. K. I hear. Click. Feel the punch. Then hear. Oh. Crap. Get so and so on the phone now. A nurse came up near my face to calm me. And maybe keep an eye on me. I don't really remember everything. Apparently he had nicked a blood vessel and I was bleeding internally at an alarming rate. I got to spend the night in the hospital and pee what seemed like pure blood for about 24 hours. Never try to fit your kidney biopsy in on a Friday before the doctor leaves for vacation. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.